afternoon. My name is Dave Norton from Discovering New England History, and we're going to start a new show here, a uh, tribute to the soldiers that fought in World War I, specifically uh, my ancestors, which I just found out recently. So we're putting this uh, program together. On the first slide right here, there were two brothers, uh, the Norton brothers story, we're going to call this one here, and they both fought in World War I. And it's really quite interesting. Um, to begin with, I, I had no idea, first of all, that uh, they were actually in World War I. Uh, we had a reunion in the, the, the Norton family last year, talking with some cousins that I actually never met before. And that's how this all started here. And uh, my grandfather, these are their two brothers, or they're my father's uncles, if you will. Now, the first picture right there is, is really interesting. I really like that picture that they are together. And they're all from uh, Bristol, Connecticut. So we'll begin with the next slide. Now, going back, here we are. This is Norman Norton, Bristol, Connecticut. And this is after, certainly after uh, World War I. He's relaxing on the back step. And uh, such a calm looking picture right here. And he's probably thinking back to what happened to him in 1917. So we'll go to the next slide. This is probably taken around 1930. Everything's all, all calm and everything. And he's taking his wife out for a, for a ride in the country. There he is right there. But he probably can't get World War I out of his mind entirely. We'll go to the next slide. And there's a close-up of the two brothers. Probably taken around 1912. Uh, Norman Norton was uh, on the left, 19 years old. And his brother, William Norton, on the right, was 21 years old. And it's really kind of an interesting story here uh, on World War I. Uh, my father passed away. Some of his possessions were in an old cigar box. And I f something's told me I better take a look at this here. I have this... Uh, shield right here okay and i knew it wasn't his outfit because i researched him entirely on previous episodes i said wait a minute let me go take a look at this really close and that's what i did it's the 16th infantry regiment and that's how this story started um and i remember i was very young back in bristol connecticut um probably in grammar school even <laughs> earlier. Our TV set was only black and white. Nobody had color TV then. <laughs> I, I won't tell you how old I am. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> my father's uncle would come over every uh, Thursday night, and they would sit down around 8 o'clock, and radio was a big thing back then, and they didn't have the Red Sox. We're not televised all the time. And they would listen to the Red Sox game. And I refer to him, of course, as uh, Uncle Bill. And uh, I just remember that very distinctly. And now I found out, I knew he was in World War I, but I didn't know, couldn't put anything together on him, no history, and I never, I never heard him talk about anything like that. Until, like I said, I found this shield, and that was a 16th Infantry Regiment. And believe it or not, it was uh, underneath the, uh, or under the 1st first, first Infantry division, which is called the Big Red One. So we'll go to the next slide. And now I want to get back to Bristol, Connecticut. Here's Main Street. This picture was taken in 1915. Everything was all calm. Of course, World War I was uh, raging over there in Europe, and no one wanted to get involved at all. They elected Woodrow Wilson, and, and, and he ran on the idea that he kept us out of war. It had nothing to do with the war over in Europe, but it was getting really worse. The German army was advancing into France. Uh, Great Britain was trying to help out uh, France to defend them, and they were going to be marching towards Paris. And right here, uh, the United States was completely neutral, except they were sending ships across with all kinds of supplies, ammunition, and all, all types of things like that. And that was the limit of what they... Uh, supplied at that point in World War I. We'll go to the next slide. 
And there's a picture of Bristol, Connecticut. Post office, you can see they had trolley down the streets there. They had uh, cars were the uh, primary uh, something really new. <laughs> uh, everything was all really nice, nice and quiet back then. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, this changed it all. It was a British passenger ship called the Lusitania. And in 1915, it left New York, heading to Liverpool, England, loaded with passengers. And that's a picture of the Lusitania. We'll go to the next slide. And at that time, uh, Germany had U-boats. And what they were doing is they were uh, sinking anything to do with uh, coming from England, uh, anything to do with supplying uh, uh, Europe over there f during this World War I period. And they were sinking ships. Um, and there's a picture of his, the actual U-boat. It's called the U-20, patrolling the Atlantic Ocean. This was probably in 1915. We'll go to the next slide. And you can see they, are, uh, they had a surface uh, to recharge their batteries. And that's probably what they were doing in calm seas in the Atlantic Ocean. We'll go to the next slide. And this is a great painting here. It shows the U-20 closing in on the passenger ship to Lusitania. Now, they got over, Lusitania got already across the Atlantic Ocean. It was getting close to Ireland, the southern coast of Ireland. And the ship saw that there and closed in for the attack. We'll go to the next slide. And one, part, one torpedo hit it dead on, and the whole, whole ship started uh, sinking. There's a great painting of it there. And the total passengers on the ship, you can see there on the left, 1,959. Uh, the number that were instantly killed when the boilers blew up and everything was uh, 1,100. And the number saved 761. Now, there were many Americans on the ship. Uh, <clears throat> some were saved, and, uh, but 128 were killed. And this changed public opinion in the United States about entering World War I. This was in 1915. We'll go to the next slide. And it, uh, unbelievable. It's recorded that the ship actually took between 15 and 18 minutes to completely sink. You can see all the lifeboats, a lot of lifeboats, they couldn't even get down, it went down so fast. And we'll go to the next slide. New York Times, front page, Lusitania sunk by submarine, probably 1,200 dead. Twice torpedoed off the Irish coast, sinks in 15 minutes. Unbelievable. Washington believes that a grave crisis is at hand. We'll go to the next slide. <clears throat> New York Herald, Lusitania is sunk, 1,000 probably are lost. This was, this was a, uh, in every newspaper around the world, because now the German U-boats are targeting passenger ships, not just uh, freight carrying uh, munitions. Go to the next slide. Woodrow Wilson. Believe it or not, it was two years later. It changed public opinion, but they still didn't want to get involved in the, in the war. So two years later, April 6, 1917, Everything they could see that Europe was going to be taken over by Germany. Germany was basically uh, winning the war. And so President Woodrow Wilson had no choice but to declare war in Congress. That's a picture of actual Congress back there in the day. Declared war in Germany. Go to the next slide. And this happens to be the Chicago Daily Tribune. U.S. at war. Wilson declares war. April 6, 1917, so it's two years after the Lusitania went down. Go to the next slide. And posters all around the country, they had 
Congress had to do, uh, the only way to get enough people here, the United States was terribly, had hardly any, any army at all. And they had to, had to get going here. So the uh, posters all over, I want you for the U.S. Army. And uh, every, every male had to sign up and register for the selective service between certain ages. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, William Norton, he was 25 years old then, and he registered. And we actually, I actually got these documents from my cousin, my cousin Beth. She was over uh, back in Connecticut and helping me on this research project. And you can see on circle on the left there, that's the year he was born. That's his all document. And circled on the right, it was signed June 5th, 1917. That was the very first day the Selective Service and the draft started. So they were the first ones. This William went right down and uh, made sure he had to register. And he went a step further. He, he actually signed up right then and there for the U.S. Army. We'll go to the next picture. That's his other brother, Norman. He was a couple years younger, year and a half younger. Register for the Selective Service, same day. But he did not enlist in the Army. He, was, he waited until he got drafted, which a lot of them did back then. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, General Pershing, June 1917, you know, we declared war in uh, April. Here it is, June 1917. He made it across the Atlantic Ocean. That's the famous uh, picture of him on the right, uh, been colorized. And he made it all across to France. And there's a the great poster there showing uh, Lafayette, who actually helped us with the American Revolutionary War, helped uh, George Washington win that war. And now we're returning the favor. And the slogan was Lafayette, we are here or in French, Lafayette, nous sommes ici. Uh, my French teacher would be glad I pronounced that okay. <laughs> so on June 17th, on June of 1917, there he is landing in France. Of course, the French are related. They finally got the United States into the war after all those years. We'll go to the next slide. And he visited uh, the grave of Lafayette, which is in Paris. Lafayette, we are here, of course, in June 1917. Of course, everybody was uh, taking pictures. Everybody was all excited now America was going to be in the war. And we'll go to the next slide. And they actually had a parade. They convinced them to have a parade uh, down in Paris. And everybody lined the streets. And there, there they are with the flags and everything. But the interesting thing was when Pershing went over, of course, he had to go over there. The idea was he had to set up and organize everything. So that's when he went to Paris and he brought 200 soldiers with him. That's it. <laughs> so everyone in Europe thought he was going to come over waves of different soldiers. But I remember back then, the United States really didn't have an organized army. So we'll go to the next slide. So here we are. Quite a few months later, September 1917, and here's William Norton, and that's the actual picture taken really right back in the day. That's the uh, railroad depot in Bristol, Connecticut, and he got on that train, and he, had, he headed towards New York to Fort Jay, which is in New York, right outside of uh, New York City on, on Governor's Island. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, his other brother, Norman, he got drafted. He was called up. And uh, in the same month, September 1917, he went in a different direction. He did all this research, and this is amazing here. He went to Fort Devens, Massachusetts. Now, he was drafted. And you can see there, that's an actual photograph that we had uh, in the Norton family. And it shows him embarking for Camp Devens, they call it, Plainville, Connecticut, in September. So we have that picture. 
You can see they're on the train and all the relatives are down there saying goodbye and that's where Norman went to uh, Fort Devens to do his training. We'll go to the next slide. Now I put this together, William Norton. Uh, and and you, basically it's very difficult to get a lot of these soldiers records down in uh, Washington DC or where they, where they store uh, military records. But I did a lot of detective work and I finally got a close up picture of him right there in the right. And you can see, first of all, on his left shoulder, it's a camouflage one, first infantry division, if you look very closely. I saw that, so that ver basically verified he was in the first infantry division, the big red one, and that's their patch over there on the left. And then under the first infantry division was the 16th infantry regiment, and lo and behold, after doing some research, there's the exact uh, crest that my father had in his old cigar box. There it is. And he was assigned to a machine gun, 2nd uh, Machine Gun Battalion, Company D. And I actually picked that up. Uh, it's called the collar disc. And you can see actually on his collar, um, you can see the crossed infantry rifles, and you can see MG in the top, stands for machine gun, and Company D, which was amazing. I've got all that together. And I ordered a um, uh, the victory in, in uh, Europe, World War I medal. That'll, that'll be coming to me, which, of course, he got after, the, uh, after he survived World War I. So I'll go to the next slide. Now, this is a picture today. Governor's Island, and that's where they would have ended up. And there's his picture that's been in the family. There he is, uh, William Norton, Governor's Island, reporting for duty, 1st Infantry Division. And that's, that's where he went for his training. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, there's a great picture there of the actual, what they call Fort J, Governor's Island, New York, 1917. Now, the President Wilson picked General George Pershing to be in charge of what they call the American Expeditionary Force. That's all the uh, American Army that's going to fight over there in France. And there's his picture on the right. But we had no training at all for all these soldiers. They had to start uh, right from the beginning. We'll go to the next slide. And here's the front gate going into Fort J, probably where uh, Bill went right through the front gate there. And over on the right, they actually have some of the, uh, it was a fort, the guard uh, probably in New York Harbor, and you can see some of it where the guns, uh, large artillery pieces were back in the day. And we'll go to the next slide. And the person that was in charge, General Pershing put in charge, of all the training here for the 1st Infantry Division was a young fellow by the name of Colonel George Patton. <laughs> and there's this picture there that was taken over in uh, World War I, standing, uh, he's standing there in front of a, a French tank. He was very excited about learning all, everything he could about tanks, but that's, that's how he got his uh, interest in tanks. And on the right, that was actually a picture on Governor's Island, you can see all these raw recruits. They're still in their civilian clothes and they're starting them off uh, how to do manual of arms, how to drill, everything else like that. And they didn't even, they didn't even have enough rifles for the Army. They're using wooden, wooden <laughs> some cases wooden broomsticks or, or just uh, wooden uh, pretend rifles. That's what they had to do. We'll go to the next picture. And now I knew from his collar and that photograph I had in the family, he was in a machine gun um, group, Company D. And there's a picture there, Governor's Island, they're teaching uh, machine gun practice, so I'm sure you would have had gone through all that training. And that picture on the right is also taken in Governor's Island uh, of all the 1st uh, Infantry Division soldiers all standing in for inspection. And we'll go to the next slide. 
Private Norman Norton, Bristol, Connecticut. Now, it's interesting here because um, he was drafted. He did not enlist. And when he drafted, he was assigned to what they call the 76th Infantry Division. And they were all training at Fort Devens, Massachusetts. And he was assigned to the 301st Trench Mortar Battery, Company E. And you can see that collar insignia there. And he had another insignia on his collar, which uh, I'm going to have to get. It, it's what they call the um, National Army of the United States. That's what it was. All draftees were, were part of that, and they had a particular collar uh, discs to wear. But he was part of the 76th Infantry Division. Go to the next line. And that's actually a mortar. You can see that it's a very small uh, but effective device. You can put it into a small trench and you can f drop the shells down at it and fire and fire and fire right from a trench, very mobile. One of the key um, defensive weapons in World War I. And his picture, we had this in the family of the 76th Infantry Division. There's the patch up there. And I circled in red, there's this picture. There's a picture of um, Norman Norton at Fort Devens. So it's all coming together because the draftees all went to Fort Devens and those that enlisted in the army went, went down to Governor's Island. So I've definitely um, verified all of this for this documentary. We'll go to the next slide. Now, Norman Norton, we have some of the postcards he sent back to Connecticut uh, when he was in Fort Devens. And they were, the 76th Infantry Division was under Major General Hodges. And there's his picture right there. Once again, to further verify this story. So now we had a postcard sent of the uh, general that was in charge of the 76th. So that kind of puts, everything is just kind of getting put together pretty, pretty good for this history of, uh, of our family. And we'll go to the next slide. And this was an actual photograph taken of training at Fort Devens, putting, putting them through all, all kinds of combat techniques and uh, bayonet training, whatever. And there's a picture of Norman Norton on the right over there. He had to go through his extensive training. You gotta remember, all these soldiers, they, I did research and said, the, United, it, the Army in the United States back then, there was only 200,000 men. And what uh, Colonel Patton and General Pershing had to do was go from 200,000 men to four million man army, which they ended up helping uh, over in Europe with. So they had to train all of these young soldiers. And we'll go to the next slide. And these, these pictures are taken at uh, Fort Devens. You can see on the left some of their training they had to go through. You can see all the soldiers in uniform standing around in the barracks. And you've got an instructor there, probably a sergeant, NCO, showing them how to make their beds how to, how to uh, clean all their equipment for inspections, uh, everything in detail they had to learn in, in the Army. And over on the uh, right, that's how they ate, and they had these uh, buildings set up on these long picnic tables, and that's called the mess hall. They had to sit down there, and there they are. They're all, uh, it's very regimented. Part of Army life. We'll go to the next picture. And here, these postcards he actually sent back, and the family kept them, which was tremendous to, to show that. Private Norman Norton, Fort Devens. I like that picture over there. He said, I, I went into the Army to shoot, not to dig sewers. <laughs> and of course, in the Army, they had to show you how to dig trenches. That's kind of an in interesting uh, postcard. And over there on the uh, on the left, when you're out in the field, they call the soldier there, he's uh, trying to wash up and 
freezing cold water. They didn't have any uh, heated water to to take <laughs> to wash up or whatever. Even back then, soldiers were griping. <laughs> we'll go to the next picture. Now, this was really interesting. Uh, Norman, he had uh, my cousin Beth had that. See the uh, collar disc on the top. <laughs> That's the uh, National Army of the United States with the initials there. And then down the bottom is cross cannons, and that's because he was in the uh, trench mortars. And on the right, she still has, to this day, those are his dog tags that they had in World War I. So what I'm attempting to do is put this all together in some, some form to, uh, to help the family. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, this is quite a <laughs> November now, and this is certainly a long time. What Pershing did is he wanted to train the army and was reluctant to put them into combat until they had uh, extensive training. So probably William Norton, 26 years old, 1st Infantry Division. He would have been standing in at attention right there, ready to board, board a ship in Hoboken, New Jersey, to head over to France. And we'll go to the next slide. And also probably around the same, well, here he is, actually, the 1st Infantry Division. I finally got this picture also, which is good. And this was actually taken in uh, Le Havre, France, December 1917. And that's when the, uh, the last group of all the 1st Infantry Divisions came over. He probably came over on that, uh, on that ship and was standing at attention right there. So we're going to uh, continue our story next week. I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, you know, my effort in trying to put this together. 100 years was in uh, last year, of course, since World War I. A tribute to all the soldiers, certainly all the soldiers from New England, that uh, volunteered or were drafted to fight in World War I. Have a good evening.